naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Welcome to Iggy Garcia Live. I am Iggy Garcia. I hope you can join me here for the next 45 minutes to an hour. I'm just going to be sharing my thoughts. And uh, wow, it's incredible that we're on episode 150. Uh, time sure just accelerates, doesn't it, when we're, we're doing this work. Just when you think you're uh, able to, uh, you know, slow down and relax a little bit. It's time to get back to work, so... Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. So um, today I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the Living Journal. We'll get into that here in a minute. But uh, like we start every show, we're going to do a little bit of uh, honoring and remembering ancestors. Giving thanks to them. I hold this candle. I give thanks to those who came before me those who trailblazed the path who were pathfinders in their own right working to find the right combination to create a perfect better if not future for for their ancestors there are people who worked really diligently to create that space so people could have something and able to you know remember and carry that legacy on for their families and there are others who just um we're just part of the process to uh, just copulate and, and make babies. Either way, we're thankful and we're grateful. And I know sometimes it's very painful uh, remembering ancestors and remembering where they come from, the things that maybe they weren't so perfect to do. Oh. And that'll burn as the show goes on. I'm going to light a little sage here. Just to kind of set the tone for the room, kind of set a little tone for the area, for the space. Hmm. What is above is below. All of us in the middle, working hard. To do our thing, take the smoke into our eyes so when we see all the beautiful things. Take the smoke into our mouth so when we speak all the beautiful things. Take the smoke into our ears so we can hear all the beautiful things. Take the smoke into our heart, into our spirit, into our soul so we can be one with all the beautiful things in the universe. Oh, thank you, sisters. Thank you, Mother Nature, for these gifts as we're moving along. Have a little coffee. I know it's late, but. just kind of needed it tonight just kind of wanted it so all right so i hope everybody's doing well the comment lines are open so if you want to share comments say hi to everybody you're welcome to also partake and participate in this it's good to be here so i want to thank everybody for joining us and being with us and those of you who are staying up a little bit late to hang out with me I thank you. So, um, <clears throat> for many of us, for many of us, we have uh, we have a lot of trauma in our lives. We have a lot of things that hold us back. A lot of things that that uh, put us in a state of mind where we're at right now as human beings. Where we are, we are, we are, we are who we are because of the people and the influences, and you know, in the projections and the judgments that people have put upon us now some of you probably are strong and, and now you've moved on from that and you're in a better place but some of you are not and some of you are working through the process and i get that so that's a normal thing but there are some of you who uh, are looking for answers and looking for ways to move through this now i'm not here to discount any kind of uh 
medical help or anything like that psychiatrist psychology i mean those those all have their place and you know if that works for you then do it i'm here to say i'm just here as a minister of the of a native american church and a minister of the condor eagle society and as i do my work through shamanistic practices i'm here to share with you uh, shaman practices about how things are done now some of these things are of my own creation some of them are through spirit well all of it through spirit but and some of its teachings through my family and some of them are a fusion of things that have come together working through the process of learning from other teachers who have you know laid the groundwork for me who have done work uh deep work in connecting with spirit so i want to say hi to Anna Maria. i want to say hi to my uncle mauro jose garcia lemke who's what listening to my show hola tío mucho gusto verte ahí en, en el internet Acá okay, en Facebook estamos haciendo mi show que siempre hablamos de, de cosas de shamanismo y con, hoy día viva Perú hoy día es la día de las patrias de Perú la bicentenial uh, today is Peruvian Independence Day and it's our bicentennial year so I want to say hi to my uncle there so hopefully we're able to move forward so what does it mean to heal what does that mean what what does the purpose of healing mean because for a lot of us, healing is maybe what we want and maybe what we don't want. There's some of us who benefit from not healing. There's some of us who benefit from carrying the, the, that trauma, that, that embedded uh, system inside of our body forever so we can feel, you know, feel that uh, and have some kind of crutch and use it. And for some of us, it becomes our story. For some of us, it becomes who we, we identify with and who we tell the world, hey, oh, this is what happened to me. This is who I'm... That's not you. That's a version, a piece, a piece of you that was trapped and frozen in time. Okay, so but a lot of us carry that burden, thinking that we have to own that. And if we don't share that story, we'll forget. But like I've talked to you in many shows, the more you tell a story... The more it changes, the more it becomes uh, different. And there's sometimes we we keep adding to the story, changing the story, and the story goes on and evolves into something else. But in shamanic practices, what we try to do is we try to dig deep inside and travel with somebody. There are all forms of shamanism. There are shamanism, you know, where we use the ayahuasca plant in order to uh, connect san pedro different types of things there's peyote there's uh there's cannabis there's all kinds of things that different shamans use now i'm not discounting that those don't help and they don't work those are accelerated processes to get to where we need to be but i always find that the process of of acceleration can be very hard on some people but it could also be a very beautiful experience so i'm not here to knock it by any means because you know i've also taken ayahuasca several times in order to you know help my body help my mind and it has helped me it has helped me prepare to get to be where the person i am today now will i would i ever always do it probably not from time to time i would choose to but that's just where i'm at right now things do change but i do find that the the, the, the slower pace of interacting and finding yourself is actually more powerful it's actually more meaningful uh, for me personally and for a lot of the people that I work with finding those pieces and parts of yourself sometimes it's more delicate it's more personal and it also opens up windows that we didn't think we could open because there's so many things and so many th thing factors that play into this here's what happens sometimes we have people in our lives who we we don't know what to do with them we, we really don't know how to interact with them we don't know how to tell them that you know that that their time or, or the space that we're in with them is no longer needed because we move and move through things and we move out of things so for a lot of people who are let's say they're you know they're adopted for example and they have a biological parent or biological mother or father and they're adopted by a family who raises them in a correct positive you know great great life you know whatever you want to call it and then all of a sudden they interject the biological parent, and then the biological parent comes in and is totally dysfunctional totally not uh not in this 
headspace that they need to be or the heart space to uh, create a relationship with this new person. Because a lot of times a new person has worked so hard to move into a, a place where it's very important to him and very valuable to be. And so, and I see this a lot with people. I see a lot of people who they go and search and they try to find their biological parent and then they're let down. Or they, they were like, well, no wonder I was adopted. <laughs> or no wonder, you know, this person is not in my life. But then sometimes they let them in and then sometimes they don't know how to say goodbye because you know blood is blood regardless but there are people beautiful people who who help people it's kind of like you create your own family your own tribe and then when you try to insert somebody who's has a whole different upbringing and whole different thinking of how you are it makes it very difficult so how do you sever those ties how do you break away from those people there are many processes and many different ways to do that. For some people, they do it through, um, you know, ceremony. They do it through prayer or they just completely cut them off or they completely put a restraining order on. Those are ways of doing that. One of the best ways that I find to work your way away from somebody who doesn't uh, fit your value systems and the, and the things that you do is to write them a letter. Write them a, a letter of love, remorse, anger, frustration, all the feelings that you need to write. And in this letter, you write it without punctuation. You write it without capitalization. You just write it. And whatever's in your heart, whatever's in your feeling, you write this letter. And then two things can happen. You can give them the letter. Or you can do a ceremony and burn the letter and ask Spirit to recycle. Does it work? I believe it does. I've seen a lot of good things come out of it. Because it helps you, the person who's trying to heal, because all healing is self-healing. We all work to places where we want to heal our pieces and frozen parts of us. So the topic today, my, my story, is to uh, share with you the Living Journal, which is, I believe is very powerful medicine. It's something that's used in the shamanic practices. And it's probably used in a lot of different other modalities as well that um, maybe I'm not aware of, but I know I've heard... People talk about journaling, but this particular journaling is done in the format of number one, getting yourself a journal, okay, and just free writing, okay. This journaling, what happens is in the living journal, this is a journal, this isn't about memories, this isn't about what happened to you, this isn't about how or when or what happened this is actually a conversation with yourself where you start how you start is basic it's going to be up to you you can start at the beginning in conception you can start at the end at your death the thing about this journaling is that you you talk to the part of yourself you talk to the child who you are because time is an illusion time is 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 a linear point but it was, has many branches has many branches that break off and all these little branches that break off are different potentials and different futures different pasts that happen now the things that happened to you in the past may look like they're in a straight line but events in your life when the things happen you fall off this path and you go down or you go up or you go sideways or you branch this way which creates a whole new timeline for you it creates a whole new version of yourself as you progress through your life, you can come, you can find your way back to the original timeline. But sometimes it's difficult because we created such a life in the timeline that we've been pushed into because of our trauma, because of our feelings, because of emotions. And for me, this is truth. This is what I feel and this is what I believe. This is what I teach. So the Living Journal is a journal of you communicating and talking to yourself. My suggestion is that this journal is that you write it as if you are you talking to you in the future or talking to you in the past, having a dialogue and conversation. And it's also free writing because I don't want you to think or, or process too much about it. You'll be in moments where you'll freeze and you'll stop. But this is about free falling and free talking to yourself. So I'm going to read a little from my journal. And I can't read it all because it's probably all garbled up. But. 
okay so this is this is um i started this particular journal okay okay so i'm going to read what i wrote letters to younger me december 8 2017 ignacio nacho iggy garcia 12866 okay this is a book, a powerful, loving gift to all the parts of us frozen in time. I hope we can see life a little differently after we finish writing it. I know we hold these experiences much differently, and we do now. I'm going to let you know I'll be free writing this journal, so please excuse the spelling, the sentence structure. Read with an open mind and hear it. And you sign this journal in the beginning. You put your name and the date that you start this journal. That's always a big plus, okay? This is something you do. I don't know if you can focus that or not. But I want you to do that with your new journal. It doesn't have to be a fancy journal. You can just go to the thrift store, find a journal, and write. Just going to read one page here. Just kind of just kind of get you a feel of how I started this particular journal. And I have several journals like this. Hello, younger me. Okay, I want to uh, let you know I will be jumping around writing to you. So I hope you understand. Well, here we are at the table at my desk about to reach out to me in the past, present, future. So far, so good. What and where do I start? I know it's not hard, but I'm blocked. I don't need to be uh, so, but be patient with me. Today is a birthday, younger me. It's, your, it's yours today. Born in Peru, Lima, 12 p.m. at high noon 1966 and I did the numerology on this and uh, I ended up with the number six younger me I'm sure to remember all the stories your mom and dad shared with us I wanted to let you know we've been on this planet 51 years now I can feel the changes in my body and mind so at this time I sit think about what I, my life would be have been like if my I can't no I can't read what it says I uh, had moved to if I haven't moved to the US Wow Bobby took a huge leap of faith to come and bring us to this to the here to this country there are great stories that wouldn't that we would be returning but now is not the time I was a uh, year as you can see, you know, it's just me writing free and freehand. But I, I, this is kind of what I want you to do. This is this is kind of the. It, it's kind of a talking to self, and rewriting your past, as you're talking in the future. And the cool thing is about you'll you'll know things, about yourself back then. You'll get to the point where your mind starts taking you to the past, and you go, "I knew that a long time ago. How did I know that?" It's because in the future, you wrote the story to yourself. And, you know, it's kind of weird. It's, it's almost kind of kind of spooky to some degree. And, uh, you know, I go on and on. I talk about just my day. And so I talk about when my parents passed away, explaining to them. It's, um, it's just really powerful medicine and I and I stop a little bit and I pause a little bit because just because the feelings that I get after I write this is of clarity and understanding and so I'm gonna I'm gonna read a little bit about an actual conversation with myself and I want you to understand that when you write a conversation when you're in the present moment you use one color ink in this and the and the second part you use a different color ink so you can distinguish it when you come back later you know so the blue for example is where I'm at in the present moment and the green is the past me which is really me in present moment having a talk with myself so here so we'll call Iggy the present and Nacho Nachito is my uh, name in Peru when they used to call me as a little kid Iggy didn't come so much later okay can I talk to you yes change the color of the pen okay so that was a message I got 
when I was talking to this. Now, this is something that I didn't do before. This happened today. So this is why it's a living journal. This is why it's always evolving. And it says, I like the green. I like green. Go with it. Last time I reached out to each other, I met an old woman in the apartment. Okay, so there was a story where I talked about an old lady who was in an apartment. And she was locked away in her apartment. would look out the window and all the kids would get freaked out. And they'd all run by and try to run past her window. And if she saw you, you'd be frozen or you'd be, or she'd take your soul. I remember something like that. So, yes, I remember. Did you read the, my letter to your to you about mommy and papi which i was talking about uh their passing and my version my and this person's eight so i know this person's eight because we had the dialogue about it I said i'm sad it made me sad to know this is at such young age i took took them to see such a strong powerful people and they're all trying to make things good as rosa which is my sister and i play a lot waiting and from what what it's worth we are not allowed outside in any way we are this is a little boy talking we are like the little old lady looking out the window trying to feel and connect with life in the time of old and youth and I say, hey, I hope you're not influencing. I hope you're not influencing writing. And he said, ha, 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 no, silly. I'm you at the times come. Let me see. Uh, I'm you at the times came back to in this space when you were me at this age. How old are we? I'm eight. So what's happening is I'm having this talk about my life to myself. About what I was doing when I was eight. And the, the cool thing about it was. There was a point where. We talked about the little old lady. In the window. And how she lived her life. And I, I actually met her at one point in my life. When I went up there and had the courage to walk into the apartment. Knock on her door. That's another part of my story. But the irony. And the similarity was. My parents worked every day. And they had two jobs. Three jobs. And then we come home from school. And. Then we would look out the window, just like the old lady, my sister and I. We would look out. We weren't allowed out of the apartment because, well, of course, there was no supervision. You know, we were young. We were kids. And knowing me, I'd get into trouble. So the amazing thing was the parallels of that story with the little old lady and myself, how I was in the window looking out and how I observed her, which brings me to the point where we are all one and we are all connected and we are all part of this, this grand scheme, this universe and how some, how things work out. And I find it really interesting because the story that I share with myself, it's, you know, it's very deep. And to actually talk to a version of yourself and to have a conversation with yourself in this first, third, second, you know, person, whatever you want to call it, whatever, whatever it goes, however you want to do it, it's pretty interesting. It's it's almost like you become your you become you at that age, communicating with you in this age, and this is all in writing. And I also recommend that you put on music, which is called uh, uh, if you go if you go on Spotify or if you go on iTunes, look for music for concentration, music that helps you concentrate. Meditation music. Don't I try not to, I try to stay away from that as much as possible because that takes you in a whole different frequency, a whole different. Uh, beta, theta, and different types of feelings. I want you to go into music that's more, uh, not really a trance, but kind of keeps your emotions going. So that'd be more like piano music, uh, different things like that. So look for those kind of musics to help you when you write. Now I'm going to tell you, when you use this, when you use this music as you're writing, you could get very emotional, very sad, very triggered, and you get very joyful, very, you know, whatever. You'll feel it. But that's the whole point about the Living Journal. The Living Journal is about connecting with yourself. Connecting with higher self, lower self, middle self, past self, present self, you know, future self. Projecting yourself into the future, projecting yourself into the past. Now the cool thing is that you have a lot of these answers about what you're writing. And you'll start to, when you start writing this, 
it's going to kind of freak you out a little bit because you're going to be you're going to go oh my gosh i remember that when i was little you know how little kids know things and little kids go you know they just have the answer oh i know when that person died or i know when that when i moved to this place i know when we're going to be doing this it's because there's people who work on the processes of living journals. People who work on writing stories and remembering things about their lives. People who are working on healing the traumatic emotions about themselves. And so what happens is, in this timeline, we feel the energy. We send it back. We're, we're rewriting the story. We're giving ourselves an opportunity to rewrite it. Or to at least observe it. As a child, you know, I remember saying some crazy stuff. And I'm like, man, what, what, what's, what's that mean? You know, everybody in my family thought I was probably crazy or weird, but I was crazy and weird, but <laughs> either way, you know, the thing is, it's because I'm in communication with myself. You know, the story of my birth is really a bizarre one. You know, in the scheme of all things, I'm pretty fortunate to be alive. I'm pretty, pretty lucky to be here talking to you. When my mom had her surgery of her appendicitis, there was no guarantee that I would survive because they took me out of my mom and put me in a solution, <clears throat> a bathed solution of heat and, you know, warmth solution inside the embryonic sack as they operate on her because her, her appendix was ruptured. And, you know, that poison goes through your body. And, you know, the doctor wasn't too sure that I was going to make it. The only thing he knew is that one of us was going to make it. And my mom was, my mom was not going to let that happen. Neither was my dad. And, you know, I wasn't out of the woods yet. I was born, saw a light. Here I am. They put me back in. And they sew her up. Of course, you know, there's inflammation. There's swelling and stuff. So, you know, there's no, there was no guarantee. The doctor said he wasn't sure. The, the operation was successful. But the stress and the trauma on my body. On my spirit was was hard. So that's my first my first shamanic lightning strike. You know, boom. You know, you have metaphoric strikes and you have literal strikes. And you know, you can take them physically, spiritually, or emotionally. So I had that conversation with myself in my journal, which is probably end up in a book somehow, someday, about that moment. And I learned so much from my father about that night that I didn't know. Because I had the version, my mom's version, because all she knew is what was happening to her. My dad had the other version where he actually was helping her and moving her to the hospital. He actually carried her two miles because no one would stop and help. And so these are the kind of things that, you know, make you go, oh, wow. You know, I know the story of my dad going swimming out to the ocean as far as he could and praying to God to save my life, to save my mom. What promises he made to God and what, what, what promises he made to whatever he made, you know, for our survival. He did it. Now, my parents are both gone. They passed away within 10 months of each other. My mom, it's been three years. My dad, too, just because of the months that fell on. So this living journal is a way for me to also reconnect with pieces and part of myself and to work on the stories and the little little things that sometimes you may live, leave out to fill the gap. There's some reasons why I did certain things at a certain age for a certain reason. Because, you know, if I hadn't had this dialogue with myself, with this living journal, I would never known. I would never been able to connect with that. And that's what I found very fascinating about the living journal process. Now, the living journal can be done with people who are still alive, people who have transitioned. You can have conversations and dialogue with people that you love and care about. Now, it's not a spell. It's not, it's not you creating something that's not there it's you just having dialogue so when you actually have dialogue with that person you're able to focus and harness that energy now if somebody who transitions someone who's passed away and you write this living journal well you invite them to the space like you do anything 
and write and share with them. And then what happens is you'll actually connect spiritually through spirit, through great spirit, through God, through the universe. And they will manifest your pen and you will write the words that need to come out. Now, I don't know what you're going to write. I'm not sure what you're going to connect with. But the cool thing is that you're going to be writing something. Something's going to come out. Something's going to be there. And something's going to be shared there. That you probably didn't even know you were even, even possible. Now, regular journaling is just putting down your thoughts. This is a living journal. This is something that you are actually in communication with. It means that it's, it's always changing, always evolving. And you're talking to, and you, when you when you go back and you read this, you'll just be like, you'll be laughing, or you'll be in tears, or you'll be in awe because my God, did I write that? Wow, that's amazing. That's things that I've written. Excuse me, pardon me on that. But you know the the thing about it is. You know, the process is, is nothing new. It's just something that's just been just been revamped and re you know, reorganized. But this particular project that I've been working on has been really good for me. And it'll be really good for you to heal those pieces apart. Because you know what? Sometimes we have to talk to ourselves and trust ourselves. Now you can write this in different versions. You can also write this in different versions like different ages, talking to different ages doesn't have to be your 54 year old person which I'm talking about myself to your eight year old you can you can skip around it doesn't have to be a methodical timeline day by day step by step because number one you'll get born number two that's not how the spiritual timeline works that's not how the timeline that I'm talking about works all these branches all these different things the events that have played out in your life have created these scenarios for you to to walk down and you've taken some of these paths and found your way back to the main path it's because we're path walkers we're path walkers we walk the path and sometimes the path can be very difficult and sometimes the path is very joyful but regardless we're walking the path because we're path walkers we're looking for the answers and searching for the things that will help us to help others to help move into the spirit into the place we need to be so the living journal is a very powerful tool and I highly recommend it. And I'll be teaching a class in this. I'll be sharing this and, and teaching everybody how to do this and the processes of it. Because there's some other factors that have to be put into play too. Okay, so that includes muscle testing. That includes just listening and talking. Because see, in the shamanic realms and the shamanism, the, you know, you everybody sees the guy dancing around with the drum and, and the fire and stuff. That's That's one version. But there's so much to shamanism. There's so much to connect. Okay. And it's so much to be in touch with somebody else's feelings and emotions. And to have empathy. And to, and, you know, and to understand where they're at and where they go. And how to release that energy. How to disconnect that energy once you do. Because what happens in shamanism. When you go deep and down and go into the spirit souls. And the, and the rest of people's minds and spirits and bodies. With your spirit guides, your animal guides. Or whatever you're going with. Whatever is leading you and guiding your angels, whatever. You know, you have to come back and have empathy for that person. Let go and release and know that it's their stuff. And for so many people, they just, we like to hold on to things because we think it's a gift to us. No, sometimes it's not a gift. Your gift is to move the energy. You're an energy worker. You move the energy. You're the hollow bone. You are the connection to spirit, to body, soul, and all that channels and works through. And so the living journal is the same way, same factor. You're a hollow bone. You follow the smoke to the place it needs to be. You go. So when you follow the smoke, that just means you're going to the place or the people are following your smoke. You're giving off the energy that you're doing the work and they find you. You'll find great teachers. You'll find great students. You'll find great connections when we pay attention and when we look for the signs. Now, the signs look for us as much as we look for them. Now, it's not about just looking around. It's not the, doesn't not like that. It's a very subtle, very gentle kiss on your head, on your forehead, your cheek, a tap on the back, a whistle, a hug, 
You just know. You'll know when it comes. And that's what's important about this living journal. You're, you're constantly writing in it. Now, you can take breaks. You don't have to write it all continuously, all the time. But I do recommend that you, do you have discipline in your work on writing in that. Now, you should have two journals. You have your journal where you just vent and you just write down whatever you feel. Because that's important to have as well. But this other journal is not about venting, per se. It's a more about communication with you and talking with you and sharing with you about how you perceive that moment in time and how you're perceiving the world right now and the things that you see. Sometimes the other version of yourself doesn't want to hear your crap. He just wants to hear the story that you have to share because sometimes the little person wants to say, hey, you know what? I fell down, scraped my knee, you know, and you're going, oh, well, you know, this happened in the world, blah, blah, blah. And the look, he's like, I don't want to hear that. I just fell down, scraped my knee. Can I tell you how he scraped my knee? I fell down off my bike and I was riding really fast, fast boy, you know, and I fell. So that's what I mean when you work in the living journal is to connect with yourself and understand yourself and hear yourself. Because sometimes... We don't hear ourselves. We don't listen to ourselves. We second guess ourselves. We don't trust ourselves. You know, or we become so hard and alienated from ourselves that we don't even see ourselves. So how do we see ourselves? Well, well, that's a great question, isn't it? If I had that answer, none of us would be listening to my show. But the thing is to find little steps and little practices like this connecting with different spiritual leaders connecting with different healers until you find the right fit for yourself because it's easy to just jump around and just find you who are healers those of you who are working to be healers what I ask always of people that I'm getting ready to work with is to find the magic all over connect with the people that you feel with and if you feel like you still need to connect with me, then come back. We'll work together. Because most of the time, you know, it looks like you want to work or you want to be connected to me. But that's not necessarily true. It was just an engagement, a meeting, an interview. But if you do work and you do connect with me, it's a story. It's a path, a path, a walker's path. A person who's working through their path, working through the energies that's in front of them connecting with the animals the birds the things seen and unseen you know we can't be blind because the world is true it's real it's a living thing and she does what she does and she holds a lot of energy she holds a lot of space for us and you know this process can be done with the earth a conversation with mother earth but a deep conversation with yourself will heal many wounds. I'm sure of this. You'll find newfound energy. You'll find newfound visions of yourself. Remember, there's another part of you in a different reality that is actually doing some amazing things. You know, if you don't believe in interdimensional beings or, or you don't believe in dimensions or, or different planets or different versions of yourselves, well, there are branches of our universe that we have gone off and created new versions of ourselves. The prime version of yourself is probably right here. This is Iggy Prime. But you always have that thought that something else is happening someplace else. But in that universe, there's somebody also thinking, well, there's someone talking on the radio. I would like to do that. You know, to believe that we're just we're just one being in the whole universe is a very arrogant statement because if we're looking at ourselves as being the only beings in this world you're discounting that creation makes everything like us look like us which is not true there are probably things that don't even look like us smell like us taste like us works like us could be gas smaller bigger Microscopic, doesn't matter. The universe is full of living creatures. 
just because you didn't see it, just because you haven't been able to observe it, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's there, kind of like the atoms, the electrons, the protons, and all the, all the new words that they use now. Those exist just because you don't see it, doesn't mean it's not real. So this process, just because you lived it, doesn't mean that it can't be changed. You know, two, two bodies in physics means it can't occupy the same space. But in, in quantum physics, two things can simultaneously exist in, in two different parts of the universe and come back and meet each other again. So the magic's there when you look for the magic. And when you're looking for the magic, the magic appears. When you're not looking for the magic, it doesn't appear. Now, sometimes ma things pop up unexpectedly and we're like wow what is that what is it it's 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 the universe it's the god like it's the consciousness of god it's it's spirit which is amazing but we don't always recognize it because our ego sometimes puts the block on us puts the whammy on us and says that's not the way it is no, 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 it can't be. No, 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 no. But you know what? We are powerful beings. We are powerful beings. We can do some very beautiful things. And we can do some very destructive things. What would you do today? What would you do? How would you rewrite your story? How would you rewrite and talk to yourself in this living journal? What is it that you want to tell yourself? What is it that you haven't told yourself? What are your deepest, darkest secrets that you're able to share with yourself that you won't share with anybody else? Because it does, it, it's there. It's there. So I challenge you to write this journal. I challenge you to talk to yourself. If you need a little help with writing it, you let me know. I can help you. I can help you get back on track and help you get to that point to write, help you write the stories about yourself. Your memoirs of you. The Living Journal. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Everybody being with me. I hope you got a little information out of this. I hope it helps you a little bit. I want you to visit me at Serenity Assault Spa. Here in. Uh, in Westerville, Ohio. Just check it out. SerenitySaltSpa.com That's one of my businesses. IggyGarcia.com is my other one. We'll have a drum circle this weekend at Schiller Park from 3 to 5. Hope you can join us in more events to come. If you go to iggygarcia.com, join my mailing list. That way you can keep up with things. Or just keep in touch with me here on Facebook. So like I always say, it's good to be here. Ho'oponopono matakuyasin. You know what is above is below. Irisikwi, which means gratitude in Quechua. You know, matakuyasin. All my relations. My friends, do the best you can with the tools that you have and with the opportunities that are given to you. Opportunities come and go. Grasp them when you can. Enjoy them when you can. Enjoy the life that's been given to you. Enjoy the people who are around you because you don't know if you're going to have them forever. You know, there was a day I thought my parents were going to die and I knew they would die. I just didn't know they were going to die so young. So be prepared to know that you are loved. And that the love that you share with others is very appreciated. Alright. And when I say it's good to be here. Because it is good to be here. You're very much appreciated. You're very much loved. And I will see everybody next time. On Iggy Garcia Live. Thank you for tuning in. Check me out on WithInsightsRadio.com So you can check out all the episodes there. And our new journal, uh, new newsletter is coming out on uh, iggygarcia.com. So if you want to get the newsletter, join, well, join iggygarcia.com, and that'll come to you with some really cool stuff. All right, guys, thank you. Take care. Have a good night. I will see you soon. Be well, and I will see you on the other side. And I will see you on the front side, left side, at the drum circle, wherever we meet. We will meet. In the astral planes, the dream worlds will meet. So take care, friends. Be well. It's good to be here.